Hello everyone and welcome to a game that was played in 2011, it was played in the Tradewise uh, Gibraltar uh, Festival and it's a game I did not know existed up until today, I saw it on uh, on Twitter, uh, Chess24 posted a photo of uh, Fabiano Corona playing against Viktor Korchnoi and uh, we've uh, we've shown a game, uh, Magnus Carlsen played against Viktor Korchnoi, we've shown a game all the way to uh, Viktor Korchnoi playing uh, against Bobby Fischer, so he's really been playing his entire life and he's... Uh, uh, a legendary chess player, uh, unfortunately died in 2016. Uh, however, I did not know he played Fabi, and so I decided to show you this game. It's really a wild game, and uh, well, uh, I, I do hope you enjoy it. And here's the photo that uh, I've seen uh, on Twitter. Whoop, not that, that's uh, Mr. Barnes. Uh, not that, sorry about that. Uh, there we go. So, Viktor Korchnoi with the black piece against Fabi. This is the actual game uh, that we are going to show. So, uh, let's uh, let's check it out. Uh, Fabi with the white pieces opens with e4. We have e5 by Viktor. Uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So, the Rui Lopez is on the board. We have a6, Morphe's defense, uh, and bishop to a4. We have knight to f6, and now d3. So, this is the... Uh, Anderson line, uh, a bit a bit of an older opening. We have d6 and c3, uh, making room for the bishop. If the bishop uh, is under attack, we have bishop to e7 uh, and both players castle. We have castles, castles, uh, and rook to e1. And here, uh, today, um, uh, mostly played is b5 here. However, Victor goes for knight to d7. He wants to shift the knight over to b6, attack this bishop and make room for his pawn to attack on the king side with f5. So here, uh, bishop to e3, Fabi continues development, and knight to b6. Putting pressure on this bishop here, not uh, right away with bishop to c2, first bishop to b3, forcing black to waste a tempo with king to h8. Whether this is an improvement of not or not, I, I have no idea, but it is played. So bishop to b3, king to h8, preparing now f5, there is no longer this pin here. And knight b to d2. Fabi continues developing his knight. You, you can shift it to f1 and then g3. But also c4 might be a possibility later on if the e5 pawn be, gets weakened. And uh, Victor, of course, continues with his plan. He starts attacking on the king side with f5. And here, uh, a very interesting move by Fabi. He decides to capture on b6. Bishop captures on b6. Which means he gives up the bishop pair to mess up the pawn structure a little bit. And weaken the d6 pawn. So pawn captures and bishop to d5. And it is as of move 13 that this position has never been reached again. I will, however, mention that a uh, few years uh, later, uh, after this game was played, six years later to be exact, in 2017, uh, Fabi uh, had this position once again against none other than Vishwanathan Anand. Only Fabi had it with the black pieces. Uh, and here Anand continued with e captures on f5 instead of Fabi's bishop to d5. And the e captures on f5 is the strongest move recommended by the engine. However, Fabi still won this game with the black pieces, which means Fabi really uh, analyzed his game against the victor uh, well. Plenty, uh, as their uh, his game against Anand, where he had the black pieces, was a blitz game, so he probably knew a lot more about it than than Anand. Uh, but okay, bishop to d5, uh, new game, like we said, move 13, and the victor continues uh, with his play on the king side. G5, he wants to. Uh, of course, uh, attack Fabi's king. Uh, and here, Fabi plays h3, sort of a, a stopping g4, but not really, as this is exactly what Victor go goes for. So, h4, uh, sorry, g4, we have h captures, f captures, and now knight to h2, hoping to uh, grab that pawn here. However, bishop to g5 first. And now, uh, Victor says, okay, you, you, you can go after this pawn, however, if knight captures on g4, then I'm just gonna eliminate your knight from d2, and this knight will no longer be defended, it's actually quite simple, or you can just capture this one, uh, and then after captures, captures, it's just a free piece, so here by playing this bishop to g5, Victor doesn't allow Fabi to capture on g4 or or even to consolidate so first knight to c4 now fabi gets uh, rid of his uh, well target on d2 and later on he can remaneuver to knight uh, to e3 maybe even to f5 so here b5 victor forces him uh, to deal with this uh, well decision immediately uh, we have knight to e3, and now uh, Victor simply goes for the knight. Bishop captures on e3, he also gives up the bishop pair. 
Rook captures, uh, Fabi will nicely use this rook to help out with the defense of the third rank and queen to f6. Now putting pressure on the f2 pawn, so Fabi needs to defend it with queen to e1 and now comes knight to e7. Uh, some some people would, my, would probably develop this bishop to get this rook into the game as fast as possible, uh, but Victor knows his priorities. But uh, Knight to e7, now putting pressure on the bishop, but also just... Uh, remaneuvering the knight to the king side, uh, getting the knight to f4 or h4 could be could be incredibly potent. So here f3 by Fabi, and it's a it's a very uh, structure changing position uh, since uh, well you, you're you're you are opening up your king, uh, and Victor goes for it. Knight captures on d5, we have e captures on d5, and now rook to g8, uh, positioning the rook on the same uh, file as the king. We have queen to g3. Now kind of forcing uh, G captures on F3 and hoping for a queen trade, uh, but Victor is not interested. The G captures on F3. Uh, he goes for the first move, but after queen captures, he does not trade queens. But now he takes this opportunity to play bishop to F5. And it looks like a weird move because Fabi can just bring the rook to F1, put more pressure on the bishop. Uh, but it's exactly what Victor wanted to do. Uh, rook to f1 uh, puts uh, more pressure on the bishop, but now rook to g5. And now uh, you will not defend uh, the bishop by playing rook to f8, but rather rook to g5. And then you want to bring the other rook over to g8 to have even more pressure on the g file. So here, uh, well, Fabi could defend in a, in a variety of ways. He could go queen e2, he could play rook f2 to add more defense to the g2 pawn. He decides to go for uh, king to h1. So now uh, the king is no longer on the g file. And while uh, Victor could go for rook a to g8, Victor here goes for queen to h6. Now he pins the pins the knight, the knight cannot move. And also the queen can't really move from the defense of the rook. Uh, this x-ray could be, could be very dangerous. So here we have rook to f2. Uh, and now uh, rook a to g8, adding more pressure to the g file. And here, uh, the only way for Fabi to continue is rook, uh, king back to g1, saying that maybe king to h1 was not the uh, the cleanest of decisions and you really want to unpin that knight. However, uh, he started with rook to e1. Uh, now you can play rook to f1, rook to g1, add more defenders. Uh, but uh, this is now... Uh, well, it could be a bit too much. Uh, queen to g6. Now with a triple attack on the g file, uh, but also with a double attack on d3. And Fabi needs to deal with this uh, somehow. Uh, the g3 pawn is defended three times, so that's uh, dealt with. However, you still need to deal with this one here. And it's easier said than done uh, because, well... Fabi played rook to e3, he added another defender, but this is now completely winning for Victor, uh, so feel free to pause the video and uh, win the game for Victor while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting that the d3 pawn was never actually defended. And for those of you who just want to uh, enjoy the show, uh, it's bishop captures on d3. And now you see the horror. Uh, if rook captures e4 and you've basically just given a rook for the bishop, there is not much you can do here. Queen moves, uh, pawn captures, it's... Uh, it's already a pass pawn on d3, you still have two rooks and the queen, it's uh, completely winning for Victor. So after bishop captures on d3, Fabi only now plays king to g1, he realizes that the king uh, should never have uh, been on h1, uh, but now it's uh, it's uh, much too difficult to, well, to play this, because e4, now attacking the queen, defending the bishop on d3, uh, we have queen to h3, and now uh, rook captures on d5. So Victor grabs even more pawns, uh, next he's going to move this uh, rook, and he's going to start pushing his d pawn. We have queen to d7, Fabi now, uh, if he wants to survive, he has to somehow survive the attack, but also he needs to regain material balance by grabbing a couple of pawns, or at least uh, by trying to checkmate Victor here. So rook to g5, putting more pressure on the g2 pawn, and g4 now. So the uh, the g pawn is nicely defended here because the knight defends it, and if Victor wants uh, to go through it, he will have to give up the exchange. But uh, h5 is, is very much playable here. However, uh, Victor finds a different idea, queen to h6. Now again, uh, you have ideas of just uh, capturing because the rook would hang here. So rook to f7, Fabi says, all right, now we can now we can definitely play this. Such ideas 
uh, would not be possible. For example, even if you capture here, and let's say knight captures here, queen captures on e3. Now, uh, the knight cannot capture because it's pinned, but you can move the king, and uh, black is uh, still easily winning. You don't really have anything here, as it's still black to move, you can... Uh, deliver so many checks, you can pick up so many pieces, and uh, for example, let's say queen to d2 uh, delivers check, only move that's winning for black, in fact, king, let's say, goes to a light square, bishop to f1 check, and now it's completely different, rook uh, will have, either you go up the board with the king, which will be terrible, or rook captures, and then queen to d3 check, uh, well, saves black, and also wins the game for white. Uh, for black, but it's a uh, it's a very nice line, and it is something that you have to consider uh, with the rook and queen being positioned here. Uh, however, we have rook five to g7. Uh, Victor says, "I'm not interested in all any of this flashy stuff. I'm just going to defend against checkmate, and I'm going to beat you because I have a nice past. Uh, I have a nice past e pawn and a very nice d pawn." So here, rook captures on g7, nothing better to do for Fabi, rook captures and queen to d8 check, but just nicely blocking with rook to g8. We have queen to b6, and now queen to f6. So uh, very hard for, uh, for Fabi to even make a move, but he has to regain at least some material balance, so queen captures on b7, and now rook to f8, threatening to, to bring the uh, queen all the way to f2. So queen to a7, defending the rook at least, uh, and now b4. Here, uh, Fabio, of course, uh, uh, Victor wants to get to this c captures on b4 action happening so he can start uh, pushing his deep on down the board. So first rook to h3, Fabi now still tries to deliver checkmate and queen to g7. Victor defends. Uh, while offering a queen trade and the a6 pawn is nicely defended so that's not happening so queen back to e3 uh, and now comes b captures on c3 b captures and queen captures and now victor cleared the path for the d pawn and now he has a pass d pawn he has a pass e pawn it and it's going to be very hard for fabi to defend we have rook to h5 now taking uh uh, well, taking control of the d5 square, uh, but still d5, and that's a problem, because if you capture on d5, uh, it's uh, it's a very nasty queen to a1 check, king to g2, you have to go up the board, there's nothing to block it with, knight to f1 is impossible, because both the bishop and the rook are uh, defending the f1 square, so you'd have to go uh, up the board, captures with check, and then you actually hang the rook. So while a rook is defending the d5 square, the d5 square is not actually defended. So here g5 by Fabi, trying to get some counterplay with the g6, but now queen to a1 check. King to g2, and now bishop to f1 check. King to g3, uh, and here Fa uh, Victor just played uh, queen to e5 with check. And it was in this position on move 46 that Fabiano Caruana resigned the game. And what a beautiful attacking game by Victor Korchnoy. Uh, in this 2011 uh, Tradewise Gibraltar uh, Chess Festival. And uh, here you resign because there's, uh, well, there's nowhere for you to go. You either uh, go up the board and then queen captures knight, or you go, well, anywhere, king to g4, and then uh, there is nothing more for white to play here. You can just start it by attacking the queen, and uh, there's no, n n nowhere for you to go. Like, if the queen moves from the defense of the uh, f4 square, then you you're free to... Uh, bring your pieces over to f4, which will be over. So if you go queen to g3, you might over a queen trade, uh, but just bishop e to check, and you will lose too much material. Let's say here, you can trade captures, captures, and captures. You're up a whole rook. You have plenty of pass pawns. It's completely winning. It's just a just a massacre. So yeah, uh, what a what a spectacular uh, win uh, by Victor Korchner against Fabiano Corwana. Uh, like I said, I did not know the two of them have played, and I was very happy when I saw this on Twitter. Like I said, Chess24 posted it, and I decided to make a video on it because we've already shown uh, a game that Magnus Carlsen played against Victor, and we've also shown uh, Victor against young Bobby Fischer. So Victor played against uh, everyone, and if you want to check out uh, Victor versus Magnus Carlsen and Victor versus Bobby Fischer, I will put the links to both the games in the description below. It will be the first thing you see, so uh, feel free to check out uh, both of those games as well. Uh, and just uh, so you don't uh, think that uh, Victor was always old, as he was, he was pretty old when he played against Bobby Fischer as well. Uh, here is a photo of young Victor Korchnoy, uh, just so you... Uh, wow, where am, I, where am I getting these photos? Here is a photo of young Victor Korchnoy, just so you don't think that he was always 
uh, always old. So let's uh, just enjoy that for a second and we can uh, we can end the video with that. There we have it, very, very beautiful photo. I have no idea who made it, uh, doesn't say, uh, but it's, uh, it's a very old photo. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the game, uh, a great game by, by a great legend, uh, Grandmaster Victor Korchno. I hope you, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank David Kimura, uh, Robert Cummins, uh, Christopher Schilling, uh, Ginsu Beat, and Jelko Tomic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga, most likely checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world uh, or unless someone tweets something like this that I did not know existed and then I'm going to make a video about that as well. Uh, so thank you all, I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day and do check out the two uh, games in the description below. See you soon.